Well, it's not very often this happens where the car arrives and we haven't even done an introduction. But I won this one down at Rochford. I rung Ricky, a local guy, with a seven and a half ton and said, when can you get this car? And he said, I'm actually in South End doing a drop, get it paid for and I'll go straight round and pick it up. So this car, literally, we bought it, paid for it and it arrived before we had chance to do anything. But as you can see, it is a beautiful four series and it is a team effort there to get it off. It's got no power, handbrakes on and it's in gear. Well, it was all a bit quick and rushed because I rung Ricky, the lorry driver, and said, Ricky, we've won one at Rochford. When can you pick it up? And what did he say? Well, he was delivering at South I'm End. I'm in South yeah, End, Rob. So... Please get it paid for. And he, it was all a bit just quick, quick. And yeah. before we knew it, he arrived and we had to unload it. Of course, it's in park. The pyrotechnics blown. And that is, for the SRS system, these um, airbags. Once the airbags go, there is a little pyro, you got it? That There's a little pyro one. fuse basically in all cars and it's pyrotechnic and it is part of your SRS system. So when your airbag goes, this actually breaks between these two here and it shuts off your battery power. So unfortunately, the car's got no power. We bought it like that. Mm, yep. We don't know the mileage. No. I mean, how, how many miles can it have done? Of course, we've done our checks and we knew what the last known mileage was. Yep. But a beautiful, beautiful car. BMW 420i convertible. And it is truly a nice one. It's an M car. So not a M performance, but got all the M bits on it. Yeah. And it really does look the part. With, I think, very similar damage to the M4. Do you know, it's not, it probably looks worse yeah. than it actually is. When we've, we've had a quick, just a quick look here. What, that lower arm's broken, as yeah. you know. Can you but, give that wheel a wobble, Chris, yeah. just so, so you can see that wheel's it's actually all, uh, floating? Yeah, which made getting it off the lorry a little bit ch more challenging, didn't it? It did. But when you're looking at this, there's a very tiny bit of damage behind there, and there appears to be no chassis damage. And what we couldn't see in the pictures very clearly that we took a fry was if this, if the wheel had gone back into the bottom of the A post. But that's there's, right. There's no damage there at all, there's which not, is, is lovely. There? And the door is salvageable. It's I mean, a very minimal bit of damage there. Yeah, there a is. A post isn't. looks okay, doesn't it? Yeah. Tiny little scratch. So the bonnet would have done that. Bonnet's done that. So bonnet and hinges. And uh, but yeah, I think I think really. Really nice purchase. It's a mate. really nice yeah. car. Yeah. And do you but know you what? You did spend quite a while looking through, didn't you? I did spend a long time looking through. And then this popped up. And we actually won this car. And I know a lot of people always do mention it. But we actually won it for a set price. And they wanted £3,000 more. more. That's right. But as usual, I kept to original bid. And eventually, it did take... We've got Dan. Yeah, Dan's in the background, background there. Making a bit of noise. It did take 24 hours, but eventually they did let us have it. Like we said, this car's got no power. It's in park. The handbrake's probably on. And you can see it is absolutely covered in crash wrap. And the windows are ajar on it. So I guess our first... I'd be interested in why they've got the crash wrap on there. I think what they've done is crash wrap... Don't think that will up. open, do you? No. They've crash wrapped the whole thing. Right. So we've got a key with it. Yep. We need to somehow get to that pyro mm. in the boot. Yeah. I think before we go any further, there's nothing we can do. No. I will ring Gary and see if he's got a lower arm for it at Reclamet. Yep. Yeah. Because we do want to get it manoeuvrable well, yeah. on its wheels. Yeah. And because of the weather, we also need to get the windows done up. Also, you can see. Yep that the uh, convertible top roof things have actually gone off. Yep. They're going to be a little challenge. I haven't done them for a long time. No. And they're probably a bit different to how they used to be yeah. on that ratchet That's system. That's right. That's right. That's, um, I'm just going to show inside, Chris, because this is yeah, exactly so, as it's arrived. The airbags have been cut out. And I'm not sure. We're not going to be able to get that seat forward. But you can see that seat's been lifted we are going to have to get in there somehow, but there's no keyhole there. I've had a good look. No, I'm just looking. Obviously, this opens in two different ways. It's a split there by the look of it, and there, isn't it? I think this bit here, Chris, pops back this way maybe for the roof to fold away. I don't know. Yeah. We'll have to quickly watch a video, won't we? We will. But... we Mate, will. let's chuck this on time lapse. Let's try and get in that boat. Yeah. So just removing all of that crash wrap, and they was right to cover it in crash wrap, 
all of the windows are actually down on this car and the boot lid looks like it's open but we do want to get that crash wrap off ASAP because it ruins the paint it sticks to everything and of course we need to get some power to this car anyway so we are both investigating putting some power to this car jump pack we're trying to jump points there's three different wires under the bonnet we're trying it on them but we don't seem to be getting anywhere we're going to have to get inside the boot of this car so now an hour and a half in and we cannot get any power to it. Chris has got underneath here, he's checked the continuity through these lights, tried doing something with them. Then we noticed these scratches here. And if you notice, there's actually some little tiny cracks here in the um, boot lid and then chips under here, scratches under there. And Chris said, that's a big gap. Someone has actually had a bar in there and they have tried to force this boot lid open. And then we've managed to get the seats forward. They have got handles on them. And two hours, I would say two hours, we have been in here messing around. And what we quickly established was, in here, you've got a bag that does up. And that is actually the wind deflector that clips in the back of this car when the roof's down. And you can see it's quite loose, but it is preventing access to get in there. We've we've googled it we've tried looking to see if there's any other youtube videos out there but there is nothing so last result i've managed to get this side out here and i've managed to just get the bolt out of this one so i'm going to pull that one out in a minute and i've actually taken the seat bolt out can i get you to hold that chris and what that's achieved is that seat's actually moving now there is a handle behind there where you put your from from in, inside the boot you pull the handle this folds forward and you get your wind deflector out with the bag but unfortunately i can't put my hand in and bend around and get to that angle so i'm just going to get this get this corner section removed like i have that one now now i've got the bolts removed and one of them's actually in there so there's not been a lot we can show. I'm going to get that out, get this side seat removed, and hopefully yeah. we can get this seat out and actually try and get in that boot. Because it is like we stopped recording over an hour and a half ago. It's literally been that difficult. And we've also noticed there's a little broken handle there, and there is a couple of little bits of broken plastic in there, and the boot as well. So Copart have had a good go, I think. That's right. Right, mate, I'm going to carry on. You can't video anything, so we might as well cut it there until I get in. So in the boot, finally, with that back seat out, I am now concentrating on just lifting the carpet up and actually removing that live lead for the battery. So that's got the pyro in it that's blown. And if I can get that out, Chris will do just a bit of a repair on it to get us out of trouble and get the power back to that battery. They are a nightmare, these pyros, but they are a safety feature and you do need it. I've just managed to get it out there, so I'm going to hand it over to Chris. He'll show you that now and he'll do a repair on it. There it is. I absolutely love my job and I do love a new challenge all the time and I know Chris does as well but mate that is unbelievable yeah. probably three hours on there now and no closer to getting it open we think they've buggered it yeah by having a good mess around on it anyway eventually eventually I got the back seat out and then I couldn't reach the handle which is the release is let me just show so it's around that corner there but go on mate you can open that but chris managed to squeeze his arm in there and get the release what well, and i had to pull the chair towards him to get it out anyway we got it out and you would have all you would have seen on the time lapse was my feet hanging out because rather than mess around up there i went straight in got the pyro out Chris went straight in the workshop, bodged it yep. to get us out of trouble, and now instantly we've got power. Yep. We've tried to open everything, but you can see everything's up, but we've got nothing. Um, oh, I can't check the oil. Too. I mean, it's saying boot is open, Rob, on that screen is there, it? but the boot is shut. So possibly where oh, they've strained it. Sorry, mate. Look at the mileage. 8,341. Yeah, beautiful. beautiful mileage, isn't it? How that's lovely good. is that? That's good. Yeah, it's, it's saying... Shown, the boot is open, so... And the roof. Mm. No, is it showing the roof? No. Yeah, I think it is. Is it? I think it's... No, it's passenger door, sorry. Yeah, so... 
obviously where that's been strained, the boot now thinks it's open, so possibly that wouldn't work. No. We almost got to force it back down now, haven't we, to where it should be. Other safety features may be playing a part in this, and that's those head restraints have gone off. Mm. We need yeah. to get those reset because they're touching the back window as yeah. well. Yeah. But I can't check the oil. I have just checked the water. There's no rad damage. Do you want to start this? Yeah. It's... With it a go. I'm being. It's got all that uh, mood lighting like the um, the M4 had. Our jump pack's not fully charged, but this is. Right. Let me know when you're ready, and I'll boost foot, it. I've got the foot on, me on the brake. Go. Yeah, straight, oh, straight up. Straight up. Any lights? Service overdue. Yeah, we've got engine management light there, but... Let me just check for leaks, mate. Nah, nothing leaking. It sounds perfect. Shall I try the boot lift white Yeah, try it, Rob. Have you still got your foot on the brake? Yeah. Nah, it's making a noise. Yeah, it's come up. It comes up there, tailgate open. Yeah. So, I think we've probably got to push it back down. But that's that's not a problem now. No. Nah. Now it runs. Now it's we concentrate on that bit of suspension. Shall I? We can get it drivable. I've we? located the lower arm. Shall I go and get it? Yeah, hundred percent. We've got a wheel there, haven't we? I'll get the tyre swapped over, and then at yeah. least we can move this. But we also we've managed to do up all of the windows. They're all doing up now, so we ain't got to worry no. about leaving it out in the rain, have we? Shall I turn that off? Turn it off, mate. Let me go and get some... Oh, I'm yeah. made up with that. 8,341 yeah. yeah. miles. Yeah. That is... You know when you buy a salvage you car and you, chance, yeah, you? and you don't know? No. That does always really, really does make you smile, doesn't it? Yeah. Right, let Brilliant. me go and get the suspension components for this so that we can get it down off of that block and get it on its wheels. We've chucked it up on that block there, and it's been up there since it was delivered. Yeah. Let's get that sorted. Yep. We're going to have to mention them again. Reclamet, we are here. And look at that. It's got a bit of damage on it. It's got a pin dent in it there. It's got another one in it there, and one of the corners are bent over. Also, we have got the front wing. Again, little scratches and marks on it. This was our wheel. But we've got a tie up on it, and right down there, you can see we've got a lower arm. And Gary here did just show me where this bonnet, this wing, and these other bits come from. They actually come off of a car that they found in Tilbury Docks in a container, all chopped up, ready to ship out of the UK. And of course, they found it, and it was a stolen vehicle. So the insurance company have sold it to these guys, and they've broke it up, and they've got, well, these are the parts that I could get just now. Fingers crossed he's gonna have a look, see if there's a few more. Let's get back to the yard, get that lower arm on and get this car on its wheels. So now with that battery lead repaired, we can start the concentrating on the damaged suspension components, removing the wheel arch liner, lots and lots of little eight mils, and a lot of them had actually pulled through. So it was only three or four and that fell off. I'm going to remove all the other little plastics and shields under there that are in the way. And then I'll remove that damaged lower arm, uh, inner tie rod, and of course the drop link. As I said on the time-lapse, tiny little bit of a fail there. So there is our lower arm that I've just removed. Oh, guys, you get it. You can see straight away, can't you? Look, which is very, very strange because this come off of a similar car, but you can see it is just not as big. It's not as chunky as the original one off of here. And of course, I mean, it does go on there. I've just pop popped it on there, but that's miles too small. It's just going to be floating around in the gap there so i have just got off the phone to barrett's and i've ordered a lower arm fret and also when i was underneath here i've noticed some other bits that are broke so i've ordered them as well so you've got the drop link that's broke there and then the tie rod in the tie rod drumstick you can see it's got a curve in it there and you can see that the wheel is actually tipping in and the other side it's straight so that tie rod where it's bent is pulling that wheel in. Now I could temporarily 
put that on there and put the wheel on it and get it manoeuvrable but it is absolutely pointless like I say because of course it's all got to come off again but just looking in here you've got a broken earth stud there the bolts are still in that have ripped through the wheel arch liner but there's not actually any damage there at all none of these brackets look bent and then down here the damage again it looks it's completely missed that front chassis leg and just come this side of it and just pushed everything back you can see it as so it's all so soft as well this aluminium i am going to get on with something else i think on the car while we wait for them bits to arrive because they're not going to be here until the morning let's do that so that is it, on to the new bits. Unfortunately though, that lower arm that I did get from Reclamet didn't fit. So we ordered the correct new ones from Barrett's and of course they all fitted perfectly. So lower arm in there, in a tie rod, new drop link and we're ready to put the wheel on and test drive the car, fingers crossed. But of course with that wheel on, that's gonna be short lived. I'll explain exactly why now. Of course, on this one, we checked it out using Car Vertical, and I did loads of extra research that I don't normally do, and that is because we didn't know the mileage, we didn't know anything about the car because it had no power, and it was shown that. But the good thing is the pictures come straight up, so I did know that it had previously been listed for sale. So I dom it are all clear, financial and legal all clear, and damage there as usual salvage vehicle it is clearly highlighted there in amber so scrolling a little bit further down there's not actually any photos of it but you can see it was previously listed with a, a bmw dealer so that was knight's bmw dealership scrolling a little bit further down we've got no issues with theft let's go straight to the damage section this vehicle was damaged, the vehicle was marked as an insurance write-off and it was in April 2023. So that did give me a little bit of a concern why this vehicle had been sat around for so long. And you can see there, S repairable structural damage. In fact, I did panic and think this was a private entry, but it turns out it's not, it is an insurance car. And then scrolling down to our odometer, last no mileage was 2,453 miles. And there is only two mileage records found. And that is going to be a service input. You can see 2,453 miles, and that was on the 2nd, 2022. Or possibly, when it was listed for sale, that was the mileage. I want to thank Car Vertical for the continued support on the channel with these checks guys to benefit from a nice little discount off your check use the code up on screen now or hit the link in the description where it will automatically direct you to car vertical and it will already have your discount so moment of truth as soon as all that stuff did arrive from barrett's it was actually quite straightforward to put it on we've had the jump pack on it the whole time while we've been doing it and We've just fired it up. Mate, shut the door and give it a try. I'm no, sure pa no power steering. No power steering. Mm. So we might have to put the... Yeah, because of the crash, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, crash Let's just see if it moves backwards and forwards. And I guess I'll run a code scan on it anyway, because the engine light's on, isn't it? Yep. Electric handbrake's on, is it? That didn't sound healthy. Yeah, one sec. Well, I was just wondering if the uh, wheel was touching the caliper, but it's not. No, I think them wheel bolts are probably too long, and that wheel's obviously slightly bigger. Yeah, something's not right. It must be, mustn't it? It looks like it was going to move, though. Yeah, it's trying to. Yeah. Well, I'll put it back in park. Yeah, we'll have to have a look at those wheel bolts, mate. Yeah. I bet you that wheel, because it's slightly different, I bet you it's a different diameter. A th or thickness, you yeah. mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Let's look into that. Shall I leave it running for the Yeah, minute? leave it running, mate, yeah. A little tiny bit of a fail there, and it was exactly the same fail as it was on the M4, and that is the offset on that wheel. It's just not good enough, and it was actually rubbing on the back, on the suspension. So, unfortunately, what we've had to do is put the flat wheel back on but in the meantime, 
I have cleared quite a lot of codes in there. Yep. And you should have power steering yeah. there. You have. Lovely. So it makes we'll, it easier to drive, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, we're not driving it far, Chris, but no. let's have a little go we'll up down the yard goes, with yeah. a flat tyre. Is that all right? Yeah. Do you know the only thing I've, I've got a bit of a bit of an issue with yep. is it's a BMW. If the door's slightly open, they won't drive, will yeah. they? And that's saying the boot's open and the bonnet's open, so is it... Should I just try Yeah, it? I mean, it went to do it earlier, but... That's reverse. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. You don't get far, though, and then it stops you, but try, yeah, go on. So far, so good, mate. Yeah, give it a little bit of acceleration. Nothing's touching, so... Do you want to do a lap up and down the road in it? Might as well, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, I'll run up there. OK. Well, from a non-runner with no mileage displayed or anything else, I'll be honest, couldn't be happier with that. Now on its wheels and running and driving. Of course, our main priority is to get a wheel for it and then get that boot open, but... Well, I'll put my belt on, but it's still chiming. Is it? Yeah, so it's maybe it, one of the others. It is what it is. I was just saying, from buying that car as a non-runner with no mileage displayed mm. to now, it instantly puts a smile on your face, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll let you turn around, bud, and... Uh, All right, mate. Cleaning them brakes up a little bit. It's very, very, very quiet, that car. It is just a little four-cylinder, isn't it? It's a 420. So it does say on the engine cover, twin powered turbo. And I know I made a mistake with that before, didn't I? And said, oh, it's a twin turbo. And someone quite rightly corrected me and said, no, Rob, it's not. It's a twin powered turbo. And that one says the same on it. And it's amazing what brake horsepower they get out of these little engines now anyway. It's such a shame that wheel didn't fit because it's... Um, yeah, uh, it's manoeuvrable then, isn't it, constantly. But we do need to get in that boot and get that battery charged or swapped over. That's going to be a bit annoying, that yeah, mate, chime going look, off. It's a shame it's got a flat tyre, but yeah. you have to push that to clear it. I don't think it's touch screen. You have to push that around. I think that is. Is it? Oh, yeah. it is. So it is, yeah. Yeah, but it anyway. just keeps coming up fault after fault. Yeah. I was just trying to stop that chiming. That's. Do you want to chuck this in the workshop for me? Yeah. Because I need to concentrate on getting that boot open. We, yeah, we do, don't we? And I? getting it cleared out because we got um, airbag service yeah. coming to yeah. um, Brilliant. deal with this. Brilliant. All right, mate, thank All you. Mate. I don't want to be in danger of sounding repetitive, but to buy this car as a non runner, with mileage unknown, and to get it to this stage, we've just spending not a lot of money on it at all. We've now got into it, which was a nightmare in itself. Getting in that boot was a real, real pain. And it actually turned out that the only thing that was actually causing all of these problems was actually that, and that is the wind deflector. And it got to a point where we nearly had to break that up, but they're over 300 pound. Anyway, now it is the usual process. We need to strip this car, make a substantial list and get every single part here to repair it. I think, considering this arrived as a non-runner and it looked quite bad, we actually got quite lucky. Well, you buy your luck, don't you? It's not as bad as it actually first looked and I think this is going to be a very, very quick, reasonable turnaround. I know some of you are going to say, it's the wrong time of the year for a convertible, but on a late car like this, you can use it all year round and we are really, really happy. I can't wait to crunch the numbers and tell you how little we did pay for this car. Guys, that is going to be the end of today's video. As usual, of course, we do hope that you did enjoy it. And if you did, hit that thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. And of course, it shows your appreciation. Put your comments and your thoughts in the comments section down below. And don't forget, if you want to reach out, sell us one of your cars. If you've got a car that's been damaged or you've got something you think that we might be interested in, a barn find, a shed find, you can email us, sales, S-I-U-K, at gmail.com. Also in the description, there is links for all of our other social medias. We'll look forward to seeing you all very, very soon in the next one.